Uh, the reason why I played soccer was because I was quite a, a energetic kid. Like my parents probably say a nutcase of a kid, but um, I just had so much energy as a kid. So the first sport I think they could put me into was soccer because you could play that the youngest. But then I probably became more advanced at uh, AFL and cricket. That was sort of more um, what I was more naturally gifted at. Um, but then, yeah, I went over to England because I had family there. My uncle was quite a, a decent footballer. He was playing in the reserves at Blackburn and went through their academy. And they had a really good academy at the time. Um, and I went to a few Premier League games and he became sort of my idol. So um, I started channeling more energy into um, football. And um, my first, the first state team I ever made was for, for soccer or for football. So I was 12. So yeah, the primary schools team, which in that team is funny. We had Jackson Irvine, Curtis Good, and Jamie McLaren. So it was a yeah, pretty, pretty cool team. The VIS situation was a bit of a weird one because I was playing for Altona Magic in the under 21s, which was the reserve grade of MPL. Um, and then I, I don't know how. There's like a, a story. I dropped down to the under 15s for one game in the Manchester United Cup and played a played a hell of a few games, which beat some of the state teams sort of bigger teams um, across the competition and the, the first team coach was there and then he pretty much called me up into the first team. So I played a one MPL game back in 2008 when I was like 14 for Altona. Uh, they actually went on to win it that year, but the next day when I turned up to the VIS for training, uh, Ian Green, I said, yeah, you're, you're on a full scholarship now, you're not going back there. So um, from that and then, yeah, the. The, that sort of year I played for Victoria at the national tournament and that's when they picked the group of the AAS players um, to, go, to go to Canberra. Yeah, when that phone call came, I just like, I was like, shit, everything's changing now because I was in high school, had to leave at 15 or 14 um, and move to Canberra. So I remember just being like, yeah, super excited, like just, just very honoured and particularly to follow in the, the footsteps of like so many of the legends of our game. Um, yeah, it was just pretty, pretty special time. Um, not just for like the football, but just like, you, it's very unusual living with like 20, 25, 15 year old boys um, in, in like, you know, the one place, playing the sport you love with all elite players, then around you, you've just got all Olympians. So it was really unique. It's hard to explain, but um, yeah, one of those experiences that kind of matures you quite quickly. All these guys start to get games in the A-League and you just really wanted to get that contract. Um, and I remember just like putting all my eggs in one basket. I stopped, um, pretty much stopped doing like part-time work at the AIS. I kind of got fast-tracked through school. So I just trained every day on my own to like certify and get a contract. Um, I played two good games against Gold Coast, the youth team there and um, Miron um, at the time called me and yeah, wanted to bring me in straight away. So. Um, it was one of those ones because of how their youth team was set up and the success they were having and sort of his sentiment around my game um, with the change of, you know, Kalina and Smelts and stuff leaving that there would probably be opportunity for me to play there. So, um, yeah, that was my first uh, contract. So I signed that probably like the last, before the last six months I left the AIS. Uh, in all honesty, and it's not to put down an agent or anyone like that, but I wish I had someone who was wiser than me to say that's not the club to go to. Um, from the coaching perspective and also just the infrastructure of the club was clearly um, not built to be sustainable. Um, but I, I was really selfish on my football at the time and I just thought about playing and where my opportunity was. So. Um, yeah, that I ended up ended up going there, but it was one of those things I look back on, and it was like for all the hard work you do as an individual, the business of the game can cut your legs off very, very quickly. So that's probably where you know now I'm sort of very big on like looking at that stuff for, for athletes because it can derail your life really quickly. Like I was fortunate; I was one of the ones that got a second contract, um, but a lot of boys didn't. I think the first half of the season I couldn't get into the team. I was still young and I was technically as good, if not better than most of the players, but physically I just didn't know how to use my body and in the rigors of that sort of stuff. Um, and then Mike Mulvey ended up, who was the youth team coach, who um, I just can't speak more highly of as a, as a coach and man manager as such. Um, he became the coach after Miron left or got sacked, I can't remember what it was. And then pretty much, yeah, then I started, I think I played the last 10 games of the season um, before it finished. 
The Mike, this is again comes back to the brilliance of Mike Mulvey. He did a brilliant job of sheltering us from that whilst we were kids, in a sense. Um, you know, playing our first games in the A League because there was so much noise around. I remember one game we turned up to Skilled Stadium at Gold Coast and we walked into the change rooms and we had these, um, we had on our shirt sponsors High at Coolum Resort and then we just turned up one day and there was like a massive sticker on top of it saying freedom of speech. Um, and like when you sense there was like a political movement and, and sort of an agenda coming from the top and you were the pawns in it, you sensed something bad was coming. So. Um, I remember there was a photo of me actually, and this is like, it was so stupid. I was, I was the f front page of the advertiser with it on my top, like I was the spokesperson. Um, but we didn't know about it. So it was just stuff like that. It was just in the way of the football there. And it was, um, it was a big relief to get out of there for sure towards the end. But at, at the start of the year, the first half of the season, it didn't look like it was going to go that way. Not at all. Michael Pichillo called me when he was at Adelaide um, and said that they wanted to bring me. And at the time, Adelaide's squad was super impressive. They had Dario Vidisic, Bruce Jitte, Cassio, John McCain, Galekovic. Um, so I just felt like, yeah, if I could get, a, get in that team there or be at least in a, a proper club. Um, I was kind of looking at those things in my second year of like just being around a club that's not going to fall over, which is probably not the best mentality to have as a, a young kid. So, I mean, it was quite a weird one because he had a sort of big raps on me, but I, I never really played and it was hard to get in that team because in my position, it was out of me, Karuska, Dario and Osama Malik at that time was sort of flourishing in that holding midfield role as well. So I was sort of relying on them getting injured. So I'd, I'd sort of come off the bench, but until I started getting starts in consecutive games was when the assistant, Michael Volcanis, came in for Cosi. Um, and that's probably that back end of the season of my first years when I sort of felt like I belonged in the A-League and started establishing myself, scored my first goal, um, started getting more assists and things like that in recognition, which felt really good for sort of two years of slogging and feeling like you weren't achieving what you should. So, um, yeah, that was good. But the, then the difficult nature of being in Adelaide and also Gold Coast, when I look back, it was like five coaches or six coaches in three seasons across two clubs, which is... You know, any footballer can relate to it, it's your job to kind of keep going, but it does make it difficult, especially as a young kid, when you're trying to get sort of a, a foot in the front door just to get some consistency or consecutive minutes going. One of the things for me as a kid was like I was so supremely confident in myself as a footballer because I, I genuinely did so much training by, my, by myself to the point it was probably stupid. Um, just to correct weaknesses in my game or make myself like a better player. So my, the whole, my whole life, I, th I thought I was going to the World Cups with the Socceroos, I'd captain the Socceroos or play, you know, 10, 15 year career in, in Premier League type thing. Like that's, that was the dream, um, which, you know, even if you fell short of that, would still be a pretty good career. So um, I never foresaw though that I'd come out the game as young as I did. That, like that was never an option. My body just started breaking down a bit. I had osteitis pubis, and then I pretty much found out I had like a um, a form of arthritis, like where so parts of my body would inflame, and I had a really bad issue in my foot, and it was quite a quite a complex situation when I had it because I started getting some like really good minutes with Joss Epp, and he was really proud of sort of how I was shifting my game to his style, and I started getting utilised more, but I, I couldn't walk off the field like I pretty much would go home, wake up in the morning and ice my foot. And I remember Johnny McCain walking to the change room before training and I, was, I had my foot on ice and he goes, icing, icing the foot before uh, training, Jakey boy, he goes, that's never good. And I just like, I thought, yeah, this is not good. But I kept playing because I was on the last six months of my contract and I just felt like I needed more runs on the board to be re-signed. Um, and then I finally got my start against Sydney and was, yeah, I think that day, Josep told me I had to mark Del Piero, which was like, wow, okay, awesome. Um, had a really good game, I scored, and then I think I, I might have said this before, but just that day I was walking off the field like, how good is this? My foot sore, the next day I was going on the plane with the Ollie Roos, but um, as I was walking off the pitch, I was just on cloud nine. And if, yeah, if anyone had told me that day that this would be your last professional game ever, um, like it was impossible, yeah. but it was, yeah. so. Like I'd get by, I'd be on painkillers, all sorts of things. Like it was like a rock in my foot. And then as the day would go off, it would gradually start to ease up. But the more I did it, the more that sort of rock feeling in your foot and limp. And I had to wear these really thick shoes just to walk around. Um, 
yeah, it was, it was crazy. Yeah. Um, but this is like the probably being the naive nature of being a kid and not having maybe the right support system around me to understand, like, just, just own up to your injury, like, yeah. stop playing through it, you know, you'll get another contract, you're young, all that sort of stuff. I didn't think, like, it was very, like, desperate. Yeah. Um, and, yeah, it just came back to bite me because I, I probably, once I came back from the Oli Roos, it was like, I actually can't move. Mm. Um, and then probably a few weeks later, Josip said, uh, we're, we were contemplating re-signing you, but we're going to go a different way. Um, and I want to tell you now, which in his defence, he told me in probably March or April, so you can get another club. Um, and yeah, that was that with Adelaide. I hadn't played for about six months because uh, when I got back was in January. Um, and then I pretty much had to wait till pre-season started of A-League to start trialling or training again and getting interest. And I just remember coming, I, I trained at Western Sydney with um, Tony Popovich just before the year they won. Um, the Asian Champions League, they had a really good squad. I remember training really well and impressing him and then I went and played a game and I played for so long. I just remember the soccer ball being like a golf ball to me. Like I just felt like, what is this? Like it's a new sport, I was so out of it. Um, and I remember being like really cut at the time because when that trial finished, um, I, I recall no one at that club even told me whether like, no one even said like, no, you, you're not in. They just said nothing. So that silence as a kid was so like heartbreaking because I was like, oh, I'd rather someone tell me I was shit um, or things to go away and work on type thing just to help me, but I uh, didn't get anything. So I was like, shit, uh, I'm going to struggle here because the A-League at the time, I remember there was a statistic around like the amount of players under the age of 21 was only a small component of the league. So I, th I went overseas, trialed over there at sort of five, six different clubs and just probably wasn't good enough. Um, in the end, I felt like I got close to one club um, in, in Oldham, in League One. They almost signed me, but they got a player on loan at the last minute from Villa. So it was just kind of all these things were happening. But um, then I started to, that, at that point is when I started to like really fall out of love with football because I was like, what am I doing? Like this two, three year journey has been hell. I can't walk. Um, I did, I did, I had a really bad knee injury at one of the trials over there. So I was just living there, like living in another country with family. Like no social life, no job, no nothing. Um, I just started going to a really dark place. So um, it was at that point that I decided I probably should just come home, play in the NPL, and just I was just trying to reconnect um, with the sport again because I, I felt like I had the ability. Definitely, it was just like the connection to the game was really gone by then. So um, I just didn't enjoy it. Like playing in the NPL, the, the style of play, all that sort of stuff. It, it felt like a chore. Um, and then with the year at the team I was at South Melbourne, we actually won the league that year and I just remember feeling nothing when we won it. So um, it was kind of at that point that I started to think like, I don't know if I want to play this anymore. So the, when I, uh, the next year I played at Richmond and I probably had the best year and had that reconnection to the sport again of, of my life. But um, I remember the, the last game, the foot, the foot injury, oh sorry, I had the so the stuff that was happening in my foot started happening in my hip, which is how the arthritis, like in the body um, situation. Because at that time, no one could tell me what was wrong with me. Like I went for checks for cancer, I went for checks for bloods, everything. Um, and then it ended up going to see someone for like rheumatoid arthritis, which is like a crippling arthritis to have as a young, young sort of person. Um, and they found a mild form, but it wasn't rheumatoid. So... Um, yeah, at that point it was like, if you keep going, it's, it's just going to keep getting worse. Mm. Um, so yeah, it was, but it was quite a serious hip injury that was at the end of that season, which was why I never really took football seriously after that. Mm. So, I mean, I look back now and I just wish I was more patient. Definitely. I wish I had that sort of the wise head on me because I didn't think, I thought it was like make or break. I was so used to, you know, someone said this to me the other day, it might have been a curse, just like ticking all these boxes as a young kid, making every state and rep team and national team. Um, and, and then having like disappointment when you got to the top because obviously everyone's, it's a, more of an even playing field. Um, but I think the injuries was probably the biggest thing. It was really hard to, there's like so much downtime, so much alone time and, and kind of seeing, you know, people, people around you really progressing, which is what you wanted to do. So I felt like I just probably need to be a bit more patient, but... Yeah. I wasn't. <laughs> the thing um, with the podcast was strange because probably whilst when I came out of the game, I would never have thought I would have done that. Like I genuinely despised football. Like I didn't watch a game for three, four years. Um, I could, like I just couldn't face it. I couldn't, I couldn't see people I played with doing really well or 
um, you know, doing doing things that I wish I was doing, and it's like obviously very happy for him, but it was just really tough to take. So um, to be sort of like full 360 and be doing like podcasts with him and doing heaps more content around the game and stuff now, um, it's like kind of probably wholesome in a sense of like um, getting some closure on the outcome and also reconnecting with the game again in a new light where I can see the good in it for myself and um, you know be happy for everyone around me that's that's doing really well so uh, the podcast was really just a, a platform at the time I think it might have been like a bit of a release for me um, to just speak about some of my experiences but understanding that actually even though I didn't achieve everything like even players that do achieve everything still go through a lot of the same stuff that I went through so um, I remember to speak of John McCain again, he was like, he finished his career on his own terms, was a Socceroo player, captain A-League clubs, played in Europe and in the Middle East. And he was like, it's, he's, he still suffered with all the things that I suffered with and I came out of the game. So that's when I thought, well, there's something to talk about here and utilize. So it was very built on athlete transition at the start, um, the podcast, but now it's, yeah, quite a wide variety show with different sports and having a laugh and just learning more about the athlete as a person and as a performance uh, or a performer as such in their field.